right, welcome back to Gun Bunny Customs. And after a long hiatus, here is my first video back highlighting a vehicle that will work with the G.I. Joe Classified line. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I've had one for a while. Um, uh, if you look on my Instagram, I posted one, I don't know, maybe about a year ago that I opened and, and had a little, little display with for a while. But um, since then, they've been on sale um, at a few different places, Target and, and Amazon. So I've picked up uh, a few more. I think I have four total now, four or five total now, because um, I'm going to I'm, I'm eventually going to make a, a big Cobra display and these are going to be in there. Uh, so they were on sale for, I think, like six dollars when I got them. The first one I paid, I think, 14 bucks for on sale and all the other ones were like six ninety nine or five ninety nine. So if you, if you really want one, you can definitely find one at a at a at a an affordable price it comes with this goofy brock lesnar um action figure with the uh the uh tool time kid the home improvement kid head um, and this is the back and it is part of the wrecking line so it is kind of um it is light like say like on details and, and it falls apart all kinds of crazy stuff because of of all of the gimmicks of the line right just like the slambulance just like the 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 wrecking rig just like their motorcycles, their cars, that are all part of this wrecking line, they they all have that that play feature. So without further ado, I'm gonna cut into it and open this open this guy up, and uh, we will go through the motions of opening it and then figuring out how we are going to uh, sort of uh, cobrify it up a bit. As you can see, it's got these little locking nuts. On there, but you just gotta take it off, and there it is. Hold on. One last one. Boy, they really got that Brock Lesnar in there, like he's somebody special. Anyways, so here's this out of that. It does come with this pallet right here that breaks. But um, I'm going to be using the, the dollar store pallets that I got uh, off the suggestion of Ironskin on, on his video for, uh, for, the, for those dollar store pallets. They work fine. I've, I've done a little bit of uh, work with them. They work really well. They scale well. And they fit right on into this. Okay. And he's still attached here. He's still attached here. Okay. So they're really proud of their product. He's on there pretty good. So uh, I have no use for these. I, I don't collect wrestling figures, so I'm gonna end up with about, I don't know, four or five of these things. Uh, not very articulated, even for um, the, the wrestling figures. He's got minimal articulation. Um, his legs don't even like go out or anything like that. So um, he can't, I can't really use him for anything, so he's just gonna go like, you know, in a bin of toys that I give my, that I give my son. All right, so this thing goes up. It goes down and it locks into place with that. I don't know what that clips onto, but uh, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Now, like I said, it, it comes apart because it's part of that that um, wrecking rig, uh, the, the wrecking line. So the sides do come off like that, which is cool. Because I mean, I mean, really, that looks more like an industrial um, forklift like that, without all the, the goofy sides on there like that. Uh, I used to be a forklift driver in a fucking uh, in a food in a food warehouse, and um, they didn't have doors. We would just kind of hop right on in. Obviously, it was elevated off the ground and stuff like that. So I mean, there's a you know, like I said, it's, it's a WWE toy, so it's not going to be super super detailed. Um, it does have this buckle clip here for um, it looks like this will fit in there for whatever reason. So this part comes off. This comes off, and I think even these. It's only these parts, so you can break it all the way down. I mean, so realistically, like even to me, that doesn't look too bad. Obviously, the forklift would need a roof, but um, I don't know why or for what purpose. I don't know. I guess like that, make it like that. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the what the, what the play feature is. Oh, okay. See, so uh, that's how you that's how you launch them. Oh, okay. Well, we're never gonna do that again. Okay, so it even has uh, pegs for your for your figures there to, uh, to put on there. So the way I kind of like it is I, I really don't care for this, these side pieces um, like that. So I like just I like it just with the uh, 
uh, with the roof on. And if I, I might, I might remove this goofy clip. It's got the WWE um, thing on there anyway. Anyways, I don't, I don't really care for that. Um, this you can't really remove because it's it's attached to here, and that's also what helps it kind of lock into place in a in a in a more elevated position than um, the bottom. So the inside's very mildly, moderately, minimally detailed. It does have a steering wheel, and another uh, and it's, it's kind of a similar feature to the, they did a, they did a little sit and spin. Um, ATV, and it's to me it, it's the right size for classified, but it's you have to stand up. And as you can see, it's almost kind of similar like that to where they're, they're almost standing standing up in there. But we're gonna try old scrap iron. And I did a video, I filmed a video last night of uh, me doing a review of, of the new wave that includes scrap iron, copperhead, uh, sh shipwreck, rock and roll, and and torpedo but um it got kind of long and i don't know if i want to uh, actually keep that as long as i did so we'll see you'll see how how uh how scrap iron looks in there so he looks good i mean you can see he looks good he obviously fits you could obviously fit uh, multiple uh you know different figures not at the same time but you know uh, it's big enough to where you could fit the the larger body the larger bodied figures like um, um, gung ho and roadblock, but he fits, he works in there, he's great. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to keep these side the plates because I don't. To me, that just looks goofy as shit. I mean, you have the same, almost the same, virtually the same detail in the molding there than you, than you have here. So I think I'm just going to remove these because I don't think that they're really. Um, they're really gonna help in any kind of way. So then, in order to make this look like a more industrial kind of uh, Mars industry, uh, extensive enterprises, ARBCO kind of um, vehicle, I am going to, I'm going to be, I'm gonna have to remove these these pegs that stick out in order to, um, in order to get the, um, that, that attaches these these side plates and stuff like that. So I'm gonna have to remove those because those, I mean, it, they just look obtrusive and, and, and goofy. It does have some screws to take apart. There's a screw there. I'm guessing that separates the top from the bottom. Some more screws, some more screws. So in order for me to take these off, it might be better if I just remove, um, remove those screws. So, okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove the screws. Uh, let's see. They're just little Phillips head screws. Let's see if I can get. All right, let's see. So I found me this little power screwdriver that was on sale on Amazon. If you can't tell, if it's on sale on Amazon, I'm gonna buy it and try it. This thing was like 20 bucks, it comes charged. Um, I have a couple other little skill things. Uh, there was like an automatic box cutter or, or and uh, some, some other shit that, that I had got. But let's see what we're working with here, huh? So we're gonna take this guy apart and I'll probably be um, fast forwarding through a lot of this and a lot of these um, moments here because I'm almost certain you guys know how to use a screwdriver. Oh, that one might be number two. And there we have it. It's a part. Not gonna lie, it's a pretty cool seat that you could use for something else. If you're gonna make some other thing, this is the uh, front portion and you can see the kind of the gears and stuff like that in there. So I'm gonna be making this more for like, um, you know, just just um, like, a, like, a, like a basic Cobra Trooper that I'll probably make to, to go with this, a, a forklift Viper, if you will, and see uh, see how it goes. But it's really nice that it, that it comes apart like this because if you do wanna paint it, because um, I think I'm going to make 
um, the uh, I think I'm going to make it like cobra blue, like an like the like an industrial cobra blue. This part here, so you can take this part off, and then now you just have this, right? We paint that blue. We can remove these, and then we'll have to fill in whatever whatever hole, and then um, and then we will put her back in there. So she comes apart fairly easy. She's going to be uh, really, really, really easy to, to work with. It's going to be easy to paint this and then paint the seat like a flat black. Real easy. You can see the the seams in the body line are real, real, real uh, distinct. So it's going to be easy to follow. Luckily, these, these holes don't go all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them. I'm going to sand them. I'm going to fill them and make them nice and smooth. So then that way, I don't have to use that this goofy side plate. And like I said, it'll look more like an... Um, more, look more like a industrial um, um, forklift. Okay, so let's figure out how we are going to remove those. So we got a couple of options. We can obviously just hack them off or cut them off with this, or we can um, use a saw. And I have all of my shit right here. So we're gonna use this little this little saw and see how easy they come off. So, oh, look at that. See, look at that. The hole doesn't go all the way through, so they're gonna be easy to, to saw off and sand. Uh, well, bit, bit my blade, hold on, play. Okay. So I do have lots of projects lined up and um, I guess since this is my first video back, I guess I'm going to have to maybe do some explaining as far as um, why I haven't made a video in so long or why I haven't made a custom in so long. I think the last thing I did was the uh, Python Patrol, uh, the Python Patrol um, Buzz Lightyear Jet with the matching Destro and that's been a, that's been a few months. Well just dealing with personal stuff and and um my my health and stuff like that i've had to stop working i've had to do some you know some other things and stuff like that um been dealing with that been dealing with um uh, I, I had paid a contractor to do some work on my house and, and it ended up not going the way it was supposed to so we've been dealing with that been having to deal with the city and lawyers and and you know the money and trying to get trying to get all that um, situated because once that's situated um, one of the one of the projects that was um, in the works was a, uh, a larger studio room for me and so that means a larger studio means larger projects which means more projects um, and the fact that I'm, I'm not really able to physically work anymore um, at least for the time being I hope I hope I'll be able to get back to it <coughs> excuse me is gonna allow me um, ample time to do um, uh, lots of Joe stuff. I do, I do have lots of plans on the horizon as far as projects that I have coming in, projects that I want to do, and stuff like that. And um, I think we're going to get there. And so I definitely want to revitalize my channel, my YouTube channel here, and then revitalize my um, um, my Instagram page and, and get back to it. So it was fairly easy. You saw it just took a couple of minutes to, to, uh, to cut those off. I'm going to cut these two off now here as well. And then we'll do some sanding. I have uh, some sanding sticks in there. And we're gonna use those. We're gonna go down the system. It's a, it's a four part uh, little sanding belt system that I got from, where did I get that from? Fuck, maybe Amazon. You know what I mean, fucking Bezos. He's got, he's got everything. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how, they, how it works on here because I've been uh, wanting to try these as well. Okay. So we got these all removed. Like I said, it's really, really easy. So now we're gonna take our sanding sticks and we are going to uh, figure it out. So right here, if you do the sand, the, the, the actually I think I got these from uh, uh, Hobby Lobby. If you do the, the way it's supposed to go, you do gray, red, orange, and then blue. So we're gonna start off with gray and knock off um, the, the, the the bigger chunks that are that are still kind of on the side or the, Stuff of the uh, the forklift there, and then we'll work our kind of work our way down to. Um, to so, 
So I like these because they're flat. I used to use these when I was a big model builder. So we're just gonna work on that and flatten that out. And this uh, plastic is very easy to sand. I'm really digging it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna sand all that, and then uh, you know try to make it as smooth as possible. Like I said, this is pretty coarse, so you can see it's it's scuffing it up pretty good. Like I said, eventually we'll get down to the um, to the finer, you know, the to the to the higher grits, the finer sandpaper, and um, hopefully not look so good. And, and we are going to use a. Um, a self uh, uh, a filling sander, right? Like a, like a self filling sander, like from Krylon or Duplicolor or something like that. So it's not going to look too too crazy. Um, you know, a lot of that stuff is going to get a lot of those uh, scuff marks are going to get filled in just with the primer. You put a couple of uh, coats of primer on there, it'll fill the majority of it. And then as you as you lay your paint in and stuff like that, it'll it'll finish uh, sealing it off. And you'll you'll see in your in your paint as well. So we're just cleaning these up and um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause for now and I'm gonna I'm gonna get all these nice and clean so that way I don't have to edit a fucking 40 minute straight video because who wants to see me sanding topless for 40 minutes you know what I mean? not this guy so um, uh, let me just finish this one and then we're gonna break so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish working on uh, on sanding these and then figure out how I'm going to remove this clip shit thing right here, which looks fucking terrible. I mean, I, I might not. I might just fill it in and you know leave it like as a as a backlight or something like that. You know what I mean? But because um, it does have these in the front, um, I don't. I mean, this can stay gray like this. I don't care. It's going to be blue and gray. It's going to be cobra color, so uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now I'm going to get back to work. And you, you also got lights back here, so those are going to get covered with the. Uh, with the paint because I'm not going to go through the trouble of taking those off and then trying to reapply them and all that because it's going to look like shit okay so I'm going to get to sanding and then uh once I get done with that I'm going to show you uh, I'll show the results and then we'll move on to the to the painting part because I believe we can get this all done in one day because it's so simple such a such a such easy custom and I, I am going to take this off as well right here so then that way I can paint this the same blue. And then if I can figure out a way to get rid of the belt buckle on top right here, this thing, then, then I am. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pause it for now and then we'll see y'all in just a little bit. Okay. Welcome back. We have them painted now. I took this part. I took this part apart, right? But just here in the back, that's the... It's got two two little screws that'll, that'll hold it in place like that. This little plate here in the back, and that's what holds the uh, the forks here on the the, the rail and chains uh, here. So I was I did cut off the top part that had this you know had that goofy kind of buckle belt buckle to it or whatever on the top. I just I just dremeled it. I did it real fast. I just dremeled it. I didn't do anything um, special with it. I just I just cut it off. Just for the sake of this um, of this video, like I said I'm just going to go through this to show um, what all this could be and how easy you could you could take this apart and, and and do something with it. Now, people have asked before what color blue I used for uh, for my Cobra vehicles, and this is it. They sell this at um, at Michaels. This is this is Michaels store brand, and I use stamped passport. It is gloss, so eventually I'm gonna go over it with like a dead flat when I'm done. Um, but um, this is it. This this makes the perfect cobra blue. It's called Stamp Passport. Uh, I came across this at a, you know at a Michael's here a couple of years ago, I think, or a year or so ago. Whenever I started doing all this blue stuff, the uh, twenty dollar crawler and the and the big um, wrecking rig, and they were on sale for like four bucks a can. They're usually like eight or nine bucks a can, and they were on sale for four bucks a can. So I bought twenty bucks worth. I bought five of them because <clears throat> I figured if it worked, it worked. If not, it was just 20 bucks and, I, and I'll figure out something for them to use anyways. But they dry really, really, really fast. And yeah, like I said, they are, um, it is uh, gloss, paint and primer. So you do have to hit it with some dead flat afterwards. But it, it is to me uh, the, the perfect shade for Cobra. So you can see the blue there. I just did a couple of quick hits 
on it. Um, I actually put a, a, a flat black primer on them first and then and then did that to uh, kind of deepen the blue. And so um, now what we're going to do is I want to paint the seat black and I want to repaint the steering wheel black. I could have uh, taped, I could have taped off the steering wheel and, and all that kind of stuff, but um, I, uh, what the fuck for, all right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and, 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 and paint it. We're gonna use uh, our Army Painter Matte Black Air Primer. Um, I like using their air and their fast dry stuff because it does just that, it dries fast. So um, here we go. So when I when I paint stuff, I always try to put my fingers in here, like inside of it, without so then that way you don't uh, touch the um, you know what you just painted the, the the finish of what you just painted too much. So uh, and I'm just gonna slowly brush it. And since it's already like a dark blue that's already been painted black and was black to begin with, if I'm not mistaken, it's just gonna be a real quick once over. It's gonna be just enough. Because even if, um, you know, through displaying it, you put um, guys' hands on there, troopers' hands on there, and, st and, and stuff like that, they'll uh, take off some of the paint. But that, that'll kind of make it look more real world, you know what I mean? The, the, uh, the covering or the, uh, on, the, on the steering wheels are eventually going to get worn off anyways because of how much they get used. And it just kind of gives it just another little added effect of... Uh, mild realism, you know what I mean, without having to completely detail and completely, um, you know, go nuts on, 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 on detail in it. So, uh, let's see here. So, I mean, look at that. See, it's kind of did a quick once over of black on that. Move this stuff out of the way. And so now we're going to do the, do the seat same thing I like to grab it you know you gotta kind of do it like prom night and put two fingers in there hope for the best all right and you just quickly brush it on I said I'm not too worried about uh, this stuff you know what I mean if this was uh, like a Buzz Lightyear jet or something that I was trying to get you know ultra clean lines and all that kind of stuff with this is this is more of a utilitarian kind of vehicle so you're not not trying to make it look pretty or anything like that, but I do like to make my stuff look clean. So I do like to follow the um, you know the body lines of it. And you can see the two different shades. So then I uh, the two different colors. Boom. So then that's it. See that? If you just follow that body line and you know don't have a shit ton of of um, of uh, paint on your brush, you could basically hit that line in one shot. You know what I mean? But it's, uh, it's all about paint control and brush control. And once you get there, uh, it'll, it'll actually help speed up your customs a lot because you don't have to really worry. You know, you can minimize the amount of, of uh, taping in and stuff like that that, that you got to do. But um, as you can see, it's just, like I said, this is just a kind of a quick once over just to kind of give you the... Um, the, the, the look of, of what it could be. Like I said, this is a very simple custom. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to uh, set the customs world on fire with this. Basically what this is, is um, this is just gonna kind of help me down the road when I make uh, my larger uh, dioramas. So I'm hoping here within the next couple of months to really jump into doing dioramas. And uh, what I have in mind is I want to do um, I mean, it'll obviously have to be kind of modular, but um, see, that's it. Save the rest of your black in here. Put that over there. Um, so what, what I'm uh, wanting to do is large interior shots of inside of the pterodrome or inside of, you know, whatever um, cover base you wanna, you wanna make it. And so, um, And so, and, and with that, I'm, I want a bunch of uh, background and service support vehicles like this. So as you can see, voila, look, it's already drying. The black is already drying. So we're gonna give that a couple of minutes to dry. And then um, we're gonna do the, the reassembly phase, which is gonna be really, really simple. Like I said, this is gonna end up being like a 
two hour custom. You could have this custom done within an hour or two. Um, breaking it down is easy. You know, painting and priming it's pretty easy. And then we are going to um, reassemble, which is just these screws right here. This is about uh, six or seven screws, I believe. And then that's it. All right, so once this dries, we're gonna start reassembly. Okay, and we're back. So there's pretty much dry. The flat black's pretty much dry in there. So now we're gonna go through the simple reassembly stage. Like I said, this is just this is just kind of a brief overview of what could be done and how simple this could be made. You can obviously make it a, a much more complex project. You could do a lot more detailing to it. You know, I mean, you, you could add, you know, washes, you could add all kinds of detail to it and stuff like that. But I'm just trying to make a base vehicle that's gonna be, uh, you know, in, in the background, nothing, nothing too fancy. So we're gonna start by putting this guy back on. And uh, it's held together by two screws in the, in the back like that. So we're gonna start by doing, doing our first screw. All right. And then we'll do number two. Now I have to say this is pretty enjoyable. I, you know, like I said, I have, I think about four or five of these right now. Um, and I'm gonna make, it, make a Joe version, which is basically going to be a olive drab version of, of this. You know what I mean? It's not gonna be anything more, um, anything, you know, more complex than what, than what we got right here. So that's back on. And so there's a little notch in here that this guy fits into. Like I said, putting this back together is gonna be really, really simple. The hardest part is gonna be probably holding it together as you screw this shit in. All right. So then like that and so these were the two and they, they have this like the the kind of little washer around it those are the two that kind of held the body in the most those are the ones that were um, out here so we're gonna put that guy in first right down in there oh they were the ones that went on the side here I'm sorry I had those mistaken they, they go right here right I'm losing my mind. So the, you have these. Let me go ahead and decide. I forgot about these. Go on the side right here. I thought they were the ones that went to the body, but they don't. They go right in here. You can see the screw hole right there. Remember if you have a uh oh dropped it. If you have a hard time finding the hole, remember to talk sweet to it first. And let's see what she'll do for you. Oh look at that, made it so much easier. Boop. Pop that back in. So now we gotta go, we got these screws that we're gonna put in here. It's back on, All right? And then now we got this guy. And we'll figure out. You just gotta line up the post into those holes and then you press down. And since it's got fresh, you know, we just painted it, there's gonna be some, um, it's gonna be a little bit thicker than what it was originally um, there. So it's gonna take, you got to press down a little bit to uh, get those uh, posts all the way in there because of the thickness of the paint. All right, last screw. It goes right here in this middle hole. It's got all kinds of holes. Bam, there you go. All put back together. And then all we need now is our canopy. And boom, there you go. You have your Cobra forklift. Now you can put some Cobra decals there. You could do a black wash in the grill. You could do a black wash in that stuff. You can do whatever you want. But to me, I think this looks a whole lot better um, this way. To me, this looks more um, 
more military, more uh, kind of you know utilitarian or whatever. And to just give a quick side by side, we'll do it like that. Okay. So to me, I think it looks I think it looks a whole lot better without these side without these side plates and in that blue. You can make the wheels blue. There's all kinds of stuff you could do, but like I said, this was just me trying to do something quick and easy. <coughs> a fast little custom that's going to, you know, just sort of be a, just sort of be a background character. There's nothing, no pizzazz to it, nothing, nothing like that. I just wanted to make it look a little more Cobra and a little less Wrecking, you know, WWE Wrecking. So that's yet another vehicle from that line. Um, that includes the Slambulance that I've done that worked out well. The Wrecking Rig, which is right here, that's that worked out well. Um, what else? Uh, the uh, the the ATV works, even though I don't like that they stand. It, it's probably the best scaled one um, that that you can get, and it's under twenty dollars. And then they also have um, another motorcycle that comes with like an Undertaker, and, and I, I have it, but I haven't used it yet, it, uh, or even taken it out of the package because it does seem a little bit a little bit goofier than than the than um, than the other ones. So you got three vehicles right there. You got the Slambulance, the Wrecking Rig, and this Wrecking Forklift that fit perfect uh, in any part of your G.I. Joe classified universe. You can customize this to be anything you want. It could be, uh, you know, Cobra, Joe, Mars, Extensive Enterprises, any of that stuff. And then also you got, you know, like the, the, the trucks can, can be that done that way as well. So definitely, definitely a, a must have. And like I said, I got these for like six bucks. Uh, the first one I got for 14 bucks on sale and then the other three or four I got for six dollars a piece. And that's it. And then those, the, the pallets fit on there. I'm gonna have, I had to dig them out there. They have put them, I packed everything in boxes and you know, in, in hopes of getting that, having that studio built already. And you know, that's kind of one of the reasons, like I said, I haven't been doing much, but I just want to do a quick little video today to try to get back into it. Something that wasn't so, um, so extreme, something that wasn't so crazy, but, um, like I said, he looks good right there next to, next to, uh, scrap iron. You know what I mean? I think he, uh, I think you could see him, you know, maybe bringing in some experimental weapons into, uh, into Mars industry with that. So you can see it scales well, they look good. Um, like I said, if you're okay with the sort of, um, you know, childlike details of it, because it is, you know, it's, it is a toy for younger children, then you're good to go. It's got enough detail for me, just like the Slambulance, just like the Wrecking Rig, and um, I'm gonna keep making them. So like I said, I'm gonna have about four or five Cobra ones and maybe one or two Joe ones that I end up doing because they are so cheap and they are so easy to do. And as you can see with the pegs off of them, it does look much, <coughs> it does look much cleaner. You see, by taking those off, you can't even tell. You can't even tell that there was one there. You can't, I mean, right here you can because it's in that little plate, but I'll be able to fix that. But you can't really tell. So it, it doesn't look out of place. It doesn't look messed up. It doesn't look anything like that. So um, it's a quick and easy one for you to do uh, for, you, uh, for your uh, G.I. Joe Classified collection. I like mine. I'm going to be adding some Cobra logos, uh, decals to it from, was it Bad Motherfucker who makes those? Uh, I think I have some up there somewhere. I'm going to put some white logos on there. I might put a piece of styrene on here to cover up that that wwe logo although it's not very visible and you're gonna have stuff on there anyways um but that's that's just to kind of get that off the, the um toy and then the same thing with this one i'm probably gonna put like a little i'm gonna break off this little cut off this little snap right here and then just lay a flat piece because it does kind of have like a like a light kind of looking thing in there so um i don't want to do have to do that much work of cutting this off and you know i'm trying to make it make it flush both ways and stuff like that so i'm just gonna um cut off that part put a flat piece of plastic and then call it a day and it's just so i don't have to see the wwe stuff okay and here we have it totally finished so i dug out the pallets and these uh 55 gallon drums uh, the idea for the pallets i got from from iron can and the idea for the for the drums i got from rain junior customs and so there are things that I've been collecting um, and sort of, uh, I don't even know what you consider, you know, just, just kind of stockpiling things like this for 
the stuff that I'm going to be doing hopefully in the next few months with larger scenes and stuff like that. But uh, you know, vehicles like this, something that's that's sort of a, a utility vehicle that could be Joe or Cobra, that could be Mars, it could be extensive enterprises, it could be it could be whatever it is you want it to be. Um, you could make it that. And look how great it looks. You know what I mean? In that Cobra blue, right next to all the all the Cobra troopers. You know what I mean? You got scrap iron and copperhead, you know, giving out orders and and our stamped passport blue cobra forklift so we got the water slide decals from bad mother shout out to bad mother for those and so i just hit it with the flat black but the deke of uh, the flat like the excuse me the, the dead flat from krylon put the put the decals on let them dry and then i hit it and with the uh, with the dead flat again to sort of help seal the um the decals to it and there you go it do, you know what I mean? It, it looks right. It looks good for me. It's good enough to, to be in my G.I. Joe classified universe. Like I said, I'll be doing about three or four of these Cobra ones and um, maybe one or two Joe ones. As long as I can keep finding them on sale for the um, the prices that I've had, then I'm, I'm going to get me a couple of more. So there you go. Less than an hour. Less than an hour, you can have your own Cobra forklift, G.I. Joe forklift or what have you. All right. Well, this is my first first one back hadn't done anything in a while so i just wanted to start off with something kind of small something kind of easy something that we could get done um like i said in, in less less than an hour so from now on i'm going to start making uh, more videos i have a video that i filmed last night that was a um it was review for the wave that uh, of the uh, the wave with scrap iron copperhead torpedo shipwreck and rock and roll but it got kind of long it's like 45 fucking minutes because there's so much information to go over with them that i don't know if i'll even uh even put it out but it, it goes uh, in a pretty detailed look at them the, the the pros and cons of each wave i think it's a great wave um but the, you know there are lots of things that i was not happy with satisfied with or, or whatever but for the most part it, it was a great wave so i might edit that video when i edit this video and just put them all out at the same time i don't know but as of now that's it here's yet another example of a of a vehicle from an alternate line that fills the G.I. Joe classified vehicle void. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.